I'm Faye Renee, your new favorite non-binary sexpert. This is my podcast, Positively Sexy. I'm a queer sex coach and sex educator that loves to learn about everything sex. In this podcast, we talk about sexual affirmations, dating, sexual wellness, and being your best sexy self. Together, we can give you the sex life you've always wanted. Welcome back to another episode of Positively Sexy. And as you can see, this episode is a video podcast. That's crazy. I got accepted into Anchor's podcast, video podcast program. So I'm like, let's do it. This isn't where it's going to be permanently. I do want to make a permanent space in my apartment for it, but not yet. But today's episode is all on self-love and my personal solo dating journey. I will be looking at my iPad for my notes and I do have my little glass of sparkling water beside me. Get your sparkling water, get your tea, get your Starbucks, whatever, your Dunkin' and let's, let's get into today's episode. So I've been single for a few months now. It wasn't a very serious relationship and it only lasted a few months. It didn't even make it to a year. I'm not going to like dive into that relationship or why we broke up. But I just wanted to, you know, let that be know that I am currently single. So yeah, I'm basically single and I don't plan on getting into another relationship for a while. <laughs> um, I came to this decision based on my experience dating within the past two years that I've lived in Denver. It has definitely been an experience dating out here, especially because of the pandemic that definitely. However, this isn't my first time taking a long hiatus from dating. And when I say long, I do mean like long. I've gone years without dating people. And honestly, I only date like one, maybe two people a year if I date anybody that year. I've never been the type of person that needs to be in a relationship one right after the other. Um, I like to take a little bit of time to get back into who I am personally, to focus on why things didn't work out, what could be changed in the future for the next person. This time I'll be doing things a little differently though. I will be 27 in a few months and unfortunately I've had to deal with a lot of heartbreak for like a 27 year old <laughs> I do have two water signs in my chart and I am willing to admit that I can be a little dramatic when it comes to emotions and breakups I'm just an emotional person and I take things I take things to heart I take that thing I take them real deep like I still remember my first breakup in kindergarten like I still I still feel that hurt that I had. <laughs> that just makes me seem so dramatic, but it's true. Like, I don't know. Whatever. Pisces and Cancer in my in my chart. Leave me alone. <laughs> but with almost 27 years of heartbreak, I have learned several coping mechanisms, a lot of self-love, and things will be different this go round. <laughs> So everybody talks about self-love, self-care, treat yourself, but do we actually do it? Like, yeah, it's easy to go to Target, you know, spend a hundred dollars on things that weren't even on your list. I've been there, you know, we, we go to Target, we start looking at things, they got new soaps, they got new things in their dollar section, they got new stickers in the planner section. We all been there and walked out with a $100 cart that had nothing to do with the milk that we went in there for. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing. And it's okay that we do stuff like that sometimes. But it's definitely not working on our main problem, you know? Like, I know it's okay to be a material girl, you know? Material girl. We all, we all like nice things. We all like to treat ourselves, buy ourselves something nice. We deserve nice things. But things can't be the only way we show love for ourselves, you know? Now, you can go and buy nice things to treat yourself. Like going and buying a new bubble bath, going and buying a new face mask, 
but the self-love self-care doesn't come from purchasing those items it comes from taking the time that night to prepare yourself the bath and wear your face mask set up some candles set up your podcast have a little drinky drink you know that's the self-care that part is the self-love you know the actually implementing that i had to learn to love myself because all of my exes refused to love me the way that i wanted to they would always do well in one aspect of it but start lacking in others so i decided to set boundaries and stop taking bs from half bootied lovers <laughs> i set boundaries with partners and with myself as well as standards and expectations because if you can't provide for me the things that i can provide for myself then you will not be adding to me you will be subtracting from my energy and this doesn't necessarily mean in a material way every time but if your partner can't even be bothered to be excited about the things that make you happy or they're pushing their insecurities onto you then how is that benefiting you how is that adding positivity to your life how is that helping you become your best self it's not it's actually hindering your growth i promise you you're better off without all of that some of my boundaries and expectations are no other partners flat out no entertaining no other people none of that i don't i don't want none of that if you aren't satisfied with just me then that's fine but I'm not polyamorous. <laughs> don't don't be trying to sneak that on in there like, oh, they're very sexually liberated or they're very sexually open. No, 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 I am. But I'm not polyamorous. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with being poly. But if you are, then you gotta let that be known from the get-go. Don't just go cheating on people because that's stupid and unethical. If you're going to be polyamorous, be ethically polyamorous. Make sure it's, it's communicated in the, the relationship with all of the people and everybody know that they part of it. I now have the expectation to be able to have a conversation or a night alone without needing cell phones. Like at all. No social media, no work, no TikTok, no video games just us just us we can sit there and have a conversation and look at each other we can sit there and watch a movie but i don't want you while i'm telling you about my day you sitting there flipping through instagram flipping through tiktok playing whatever whatever on your phone I, that's rude it's rude focus focus you're not even you're not hearing me you're not hearing what i'm saying because your your attention is somewhere else we can watch TV, play a board game or something, but it's just too hard competing with cell phones. This doesn't have to happen every night because I love binging TikToks for hours too, but it does need to happen occasionally and if it's necessary, like I don't want those kind of distractions. I hold the same expectation for myself as well though. I often have unplugged nights I will put my phone on do not disturb and play a video game on my switch watch a movie I've been meaning to watch read a book sometimes you know start a project that you've been meaning to start for years and you've been wanting to do and you finally do like this podcast <laughs> it's like we all get so caught up on social media that we forget our own hobbies we forget what made us happy what made us unique now everything is social media. Constantly looking through social media. I like low key forgot what my hobbies were for a while. I know it had a lot to do with like depression as well. But low key forgot what my hobbies were. Every time someone will ask me what do you do outside of, out of work? And I'm like walk my dog. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have hobbies. Another step I made in my self love journey was affirming myself telling myself how hot I am or telling other people how hot I am like I have to do makeup for for my everyday job my regular job I have to wear makeup I have to be I have to get cute I often wear a wig 
I will Snapchat my sister while I'm getting ready. And I'm like, oh, look at me. Your sister's a baddie. Look at my makeup on flea. Look at my hair, lace wear. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, look at me. I'm so cute. <laughs> you should be doing that too. You walk past a mirror, double back. Look again. Check yourself out. Do a pose. Because you cute. I no longer use negative words about myself. I don't call myself dumb. I don't call myself ugly. I don't do none of that no more because I'm not. I don't claim that. I am beautiful and abundant in every aspect of my life. Stop claiming that negativity. <laughs> if you look in the mirror and call yourself ugly, of course you're going to feel ugly. But if you look in the mirror and instead focus on the things that you actually like about yourself, like, okay, you may not like that one aspect about yourself but you may like your smile everywhere you go people tell you your smile lights up a room you have a beautiful smile you have amazing teeth your teeth are so sparkly they're so white your eyes are so vibrant you have beautiful smooth skin or i don't know maybe you're just really muscular like focus on the things that you do like about yourself don't sit there and focus on a, oh i got a pimple today okay that pimple ain't gonna be there forever but your amazing personality will be. <laughs> you know? Pimples don't make you ugly, by the way. But I do know that sometimes acne can be an insecurity. All those things that you see as an insecurity, they don't make you ugly. I promise you, you're not ugly. You're not. I don't have ugly friends. One of my favorite steps of my self-love journey is solo dating. For one, I'm an introvert and I love spending time alone. So I don't mind doing things by myself and oftentimes I prefer it. <laughs> so I often take myself out to eat or to an event. I plan it out just like I would any other day with someone else. I plan my outfit. Sometimes I may even buy a new outfit depending on the occasion. I'll use my favorite body wash and body scrubs. I make sure I'm all moisturized and soft. I do my hair, I do my makeup, I wear my favorite perfume, you know. I just get real cute, real sensual, real sexy for myself. And depending on the activity, you may have a different routine. Taking a hike with your dog can be a solo date with yourself. Plan it out, make an entire day of it. Depending on the future and the pandemic, Go to a concert by yourself. Take yourself out to the movies. That new bar that just opened downtown, take yourself out there for happy hour. My first New Year's Eve in Denver, I got all cute and dressed up and I went to an erotic poetry night at a local cafe. I went all by myself and I had a great time. Don't wait for your friends to go with you or for someone to take you because before you know it, that exhibit is gonna be closed. That menu was a limited time offer. And now you missed out because you were waiting on somebody to go with you, waiting on somebody to take you, and now it's over. So just go by yourself. Before I go with this next tip, I will just say, let people know if you're traveling. Let people know where you're going to be. If you can, share your location with people. My friends, my brothers, my mother have, have my location. Like, always set, even when I'm doing something by myself. But... Solo dating can also be extended to solo vacation too. <laughs> if I hadn't done a solo trip to Colorado four years ago, I wouldn't be right here with you right now at all. Like we would be in a whole different timeline, a whole different reality. Take that solo trip because you never know how it'll change your life. Take that all-inclusive trip to Cancun that you've been dreaming about. It's too hard to make trip plans with other people anyway. If you do it yourself, then it'll go exactly how you planned it. You don't have to worry about someone not wanting to eat where you want to eat or they want to go jet skiing and you want to go on the local tour. You don't have to worry about that one person that never brings enough money and makes everyone sit inside for the rest of the trip. No tea, no shade, all jokes aside. But you see what I'm getting at. Don't wait for someone else to spoil you or treat you the way that you want to be treated. Do it for yourself now. Right now. Do it for yourself. To be fair, all of this can be done while you're dating someone, 
in a relationship with people in a marriage with someone you shouldn't be spending every waking moment with them anyway so take a few hours one day to yourself go get your nails done go get a massage go take yourself out get something get a, a nice little lunch or something there's your solo date you aren't cheating you aren't being disrespectful to your relationship for showing yourself a little love too. When you have the time, when it's safe, it could be right after you listen to this podcast. It could be if you're in your in your car after you make your stop. But I want you to write down five things that you're gonna do for yourself for, for your self-love journey. It can be five solo dates, it can be five self-care nights, whatever you need to do for your self-love journey. It could be going to that art exhibit that you've been wanting to go to. It could be finally starting that book that you've been meaning to read. It could be finally starting your, your monthly budget because you realize you never stick to your budget. All of these things can be a form of self-love. So write down five things that you want to do for yourself to show to yourself that you love yourself. It could be drink more water because you know you don't drink enough. It could be eat out once a week instead of multiple times a week. This has been Positively Sexy with Faye Renee, your favorite non-binary sex expert. If you like this podcast, please rate it and share it with your friends. If you are interested in my coaching options, visit F-A-Y-E-T-H-E-S-E-X-P-E-R-T dot W-I-X-S-I-T-E dot C-O-M backslash W-E-B-S-I-T-E. That's faithesexpert.wixsite.com backslash website. I'll see you in the next episode.